I have four critical portfolio mistakes that you're going to want to avoid. Now these four mistakes are apart from the obvious things such as not adding in your best work. Your graphic design portfolio is your key to success as a designer, so learn why you need to avoid these four portfolio mistakes. The very first mistake that you don't want to make on your graphic design portfolio is uploading or presenting your artwork with a low resolution. Now I see it time and time again where a designer uploads their work to a portfolio website, yet it's blurry and of a low resolution. It pretty much doesn't matter the quality of the actual design at this point, if the resolution is low, then 9 times out of 10, the entire project is going to be invalid. One of the main and the most crucial jobs for a designer is to make artwork actually visible to the viewer. So if you can't even achieve this in your portfolio, then anybody looking at your work is going to automatically downgrade you as a competent designer. So make sure to be working in 72 ppi for web-based graphics, but also make sure that before you save the artwork, you're actually working on a very high pixel size canvas. So let's take a quick look at my very own portfolio website, and you're going to notice that I try to make sure all of my projects are crisp and that the resolution is of a high standard. I really cannot emphasize enough how important it is to have your work crisp and clean, but also I can't emphasize how many times I see people posting their work of a low resolution. So yeah, either work with vectors, or if you are working in Photoshop, set up a large canvas of a high pixel count like I mentioned before. Just remember to keep things sharp, crisp and also clean. The second mistake that you want to avoid on your portfolio of work is to forget to use referrals or testimonials from previous clients. Now when a potential client is viewing your portfolio of work, they're going to be judging you mentally speaking, and you want to build a foundation of trust via your website. They are intending to expend their time and also their money on you as a graphic designer, so you need to reassure them as much as possible that you are the right person for the job. And one way to do this is to have a solid proof of previous projects and happy customers. Now take a look at this portfolio by Pink Dog Designs. They have a nice collection of testimonials from previous clients that they've worked with. All they have done is kindly ask the clients who they had a good relationship with if they can share just a paragraph with them for their website. They've ended up with an entire page of testimonials, which really does look good for any potential client. And again, it does go back to that trust factor that I mentioned earlier. I see so many design portfolios that forget to do this, and it actually is a very powerful thing to include. Now I actually need to update my own testimonial page as well on my portfolio website, because I have made many projects since I last updated it, and it does really work well for future clients. So if you do have some great projects from the past, just go ahead and kindly ask the client for a few words or a paragraph to go on your website. The third mistake to avoid when making a portfolio of work is not using mockups. Now I can bet that most of you out there are not going to be able to take a better, more clean and more crisp picture of your work than if you actually used a free mockup. Mockups are incredibly easy to obtain they're free, and they're also super easy to use. It really just saves you time, and also it looks very good on your portfolio. There are links down in the description box below for you to look over in terms of mockups. I've utilized mockups all over my portfolio website, because as I mentioned before, it saves time, but also it looks really neat. I could spend ages trying to set up my work for a photo shoot, and then not even end up with imagery that looks as good as this. There are free mockups, but there are also paid purchases too, if you want a higher quality, kind of more exclusive work. So yeah, go ahead and boost your graphic design portfolio with mockups. The last mistake in today's video that you want to avoid is forgetting to add context in your graphic design portfolio. Context includes a background on the client of the brief and also the goals for the project. You can tell a story with a little text and some imagery of the process that you've undertaken. Now you might ask yourself why do this, why bother with this at all? Well again, it helps to solidify yourself 
as a more competent and official designer to any potential client, and it also adds more layers to your portfolio of work. Let's take a quick look at Peter K Studio here, and you can see that he adds in a lot of info and background of the client, as well as the project itself. He does this in a neat and a tied together style throughout the entire project page. This builds up a story to the viewer, and that does actually bring them into the content that much more. It simply appears more professional, which is something you always want to try to be doing in your graphic design portfolio. Now looking through this project, I can see the branding and the ambience around the brand itself, which is a good technique to apply to a portfolio. Let's quickly look at one last project and you'll see that he's added a sketch at the very bottom. And I suggest that you have some kind of stages of your process and your creative workflow within your portfolio of work. So finally, a quick rundown of the four mistakes to avoid today. Do not upload low resolution artwork under any circumstances. Don't forget to add testimonials and also don't neglect the use of mockups. And finally, don't forget to add context to your work. There are of course more mistakes to avoid, such as adding in too little or too much work and not adding in your social media accounts on your portfolio. But these four mistakes in today's video, I feel are a great starting point towards evaluating your own portfolio of work and making sure you have things ready for potential clients. Next week on my channel, you can expect a detailed psychology type video because I know many of you want to see that kind of content. Also, there's going to be a graphic design test. And of course, Satori Graphics wouldn't be complete without an Illustrator tutorial as well. The subscription-based website is in the final stage of completion and you can expect useful in-depth courses, vector downloads, and one-on-one -on -one help from me too. This is all when you sign up for the monthly subscription on my website, and I've been working on this for quite a long time as well. But yeah, have a great weekend everybody, and until next time, design your future today. Peace.